بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Welcome to a new session from uh, Spotting Cases and we will start now
Okay. Uh, let's discuss uh, the cases. Okay, this is the first one. Uh, we can clearly see there is a well-defined uh, lesion seen at uh, the anterior temporal loop with characteristic intuitive images. They can, you can see the puppy appearance, the lupulated outline and multilocular appearance of such lesion with a characteristic uh, high, uh, 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 t uh, high flare signal in, uh, in the margin of the lesion. Uh, with no definite contrast enhancement, all these features are characteristic of dennet uh, lesion or dennet tumors. So this is a right uh, temporal loop dennet lesion. The characteristic puppy appearance or puppy cystic appearance in such a location is uh, very characteristic for uh, or very unique for uh, the uh, dennet lesion. Okay, here there is a, a, a high uh, front to parietal lesion uh, with a, a CSF-like signal uh, that is herniating through overlying defect or, uh, uh, or fracture of the overlying parietal bone and we show a characteristic widening of uh, this uh, fracture or gabbing of this fracture so this is uh, the uh, growing skull fracture left parietal uh, growing skull fracture the characteristic gabbing of the fracture is uh, very unique for such type of fracture underlying uh, there is an area of CSF like signal this is uh, the, what's called a growing skull fracture or uh, a post-traumatic cleptomeningeal cyst okay we can see here a dense calcification along with the uh, inner borders or inner po aspects of uh, the uh, kidneys or medulla of both kidneys so this is uh, the which called a medullary nephrical stenosis uh, we shouldn't uh, it is not necessary to uh, describe uh, the cause of such uh, dense coarse calcification as we know it, it usually related to renal tubular acidosis rather than uh, hyper uh, parathyroidism but it is not necessary it is enough to say this is a uh, medullary nephrocalcinosis this is dense calcification along the medulla of both kidneys this is medullary nephrocalcinosis okay this is the characteristic dumbbell shaped lesions in uh, the dorsal lumbar vertebrae we can see a dumbbell shaped lesion with an intraspinal component and prevertebral component this dumbbell shaped lesion with such uh, shape is usually characteristic of uh, the neuroenteric cyst. We can see this is the dumbbell shaped lesion with intraspinal and prevertebral component extend along with the vertebral uh, anomaly or vertebral malformation. So, this is uh, the uh, which called uh, the uh, uh, neuroenteric cyst. This is a very characteristic, this appearance is a very characteristic for the neuroenteric cyst torso lumbar neuroenteric cyst okay this slide uh, show uh, the characteristic shiny corner uh, sign of uh, ankylosing spondylitis we can see here the tiny the, sh the, uh, the uh, high or bright t1 and t2 signal in the corner of the vertebrae which is called tiny short uh, chi shiny corner sign and also we can see there is a bright T2 signal of the intervertebral disc which indicate usually a calcification and uh, there is also here uh, ankylosing of uh, the uh, uh, facet joint we can see clearly see this is an ankylosing of the facet joint all these features are keeping with an ankylosing spondylitis so this is an ankylosing spondylitis with a uh, a uh, Chinese corner sign with uh, a bright T2 signal or classification of the disc and also ankylosing of the facet joint. And this is an elliptical shaped lesion uh, uh, that is fatty lesion that is abutting the uh, eye globe here. This is uh, usually indicate this uh, an orbital dermolipoma and as we differentiate uh, from another uh, uh, similar lesion which called subconjunctival 
uh, fat prolapse uh, uh, if the lesion here uh, is uh, doesn't as as in seen in these images the lesion here does not continuous with uh, the retropalpal fat so this is at orbital dermal lipoma not subconjunctival fat prolapse subconjunctival fat prolapse the fat here is usually continuous with uh, the uh, the retropalpar fat so this is an orbital dermal lipoma right side orbital dermal lipoma here we can see clearly we can see and the osteoporosis with a uh, uh, osteopenic texture and with a uh, appearance of uh, the ponytra peculi and reduced height of all uh, the vertebral body uh, but we can see also there is a dense sclerosis along the uh, uh, vertebral uh, bodies this is uh, the characteristic of uh, the uh, which is called Roger Gers spine which which is uh, a, a characteristic features for the renal osteodystrophy so this is the characteristic Roger Gers spine with uh, uh, in a patient with a, a renal osteodystrophy okay here we can see a multiple ventricular lesion in the right ventricle we can see a multiple ventricular lesion these lesions are similar to uh, the uh, 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 heart muscles the ventricular wall we can see the signal intensity here like uh, the uh, interventricular septum or the heart muscle uh, uh, this multiple lesion in a patient with a sub diamond nodule usually this is a tuberous sclerosis such lesions are usually representing ventricular rhabdomyomas. This is a ventricular rhabdomyomas, multiple ventricular rhabdomyomas in patient with tuberous sclerosis. The rhabdomyomas usually are multiple, usually occur in a young children, and usually occur in a ventricular uh, uh, chamber. And uh, almost uh, its signal intensity similar to the cardiac muscles okay this is uh, the uh, uh, characteristic high concentric high uh, hyperdense lesion in the aortic uh, ascending aorta uh, this is uh, the intramural uh, uh, hematoma stanford type a intramural hematoma we can see and the ulcer like projection here this case is illustrated uh, in details in the last session and we mentioned the prognostic factors and uh, we mentioned uh, the, uh, uh, the significance of the ulcer like projection that is seen in the wall of the ascending aorta so uh, this is an uh, intramural hematoma with an uh, ulcer like projection and if you want to uh, 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 revise the full detail of uh, such uh, uh, important uh, urgent uh, 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 subject you can uh, revise uh, film reading uh, 33 okay here we can see there is uh, the avulsion of the anterior uh, inferior genoid labrum with a characteristic planting of the uh, uh, anterior inferior margin of the glenoid and this is the separated bone fragment seen at uh, the T1 weighted images so this is an osseous pancreas this is not a pancart uh, lesion this is an osseous pancart as the uh, uh, this is the planting of the granoid uh, margin and also there is a separated point fragment in t1 that is a high signal in t1 similar to the bone so this is and this confirm that this separated uh, fragment is usually osseous so this is an osseous uh, uh, pancart here we can see there is a, 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 a thickening, marked thickening of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and obliteration of the axillary recess. Also, there is an obliteration of the subcoracoid uh, uh, fat spaces and uh, the arbitrary interval. This by uh, low T2 signal. This uh, is a characteristic of adhesive capsulitis in the axillary recess and in the rotator interval and the subcoracoid uh, triangle. So this is uh, the uh, character. This is uh, the low T2 signal here, indicate uh, uh, synovial thickening, and in a patient with uh, adhesive capsulitis. Okay, in this slide we can see the uh, a, a high a T2 and stair signal of uh, the ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel, and the increase in the girth 
uh, of uh, the nerve so this is an ulnar nerve neuropathy or cubital uh, uh, tunnel syndrome okay we can see here there is a mild pilaritical dilatation and if we see here there is a, a hypodense uh, focal lesion seen in the pancreatic ulcer process so this is a pancreatic unsanate process carcinoma with a pilaritical dilatation okay this is uh, the characteristic uh, appearance of uh, the uh, uh, string of pearl uh, in the fundus of the gallbladder which is a characteristic for the uh, gallbladder adenomyomatosis this is a gallbladder fundal focal adenomyomatosis of the gallbladder the appearance of uh, the string of pearl in the cystic lesion in the periphery of the gallbladder wall this is a uh, fundal gallbladder adenomyomatosis okay this is uh, the pathognomonic features of the fatty regions seen at uh, the right suprarenal glands so this is an adrenal myolipoma myolipoma this is an right side adrenal myolipoma fatty region in the adrenal gland this should you should uh, say this is an adrenal myolipoma as we see this is a, a gross uh, macroscopic fat this is uh, not a microscopic fat we can see here this is a fat similar to the subcutaneous fat so this is uh, this fatty lesion this is a gross macroscopic fat this is a uh, adrenal myolipoma not uh, uh, lipid rich adenoma the lipid rich adenoma is a microscopic fat you sh you see it uh, low attenuation but it is not similar to subcutaneous fat this uh, fat is a gross fat so this, this is adrenal myolipoma hope it is uh, it was a good session and uh, meet you soon thank you